My name's Aiden and I'm from Chrysalis Science School in near Bellingen. I'd like to start by um, honouring the traditional custodians of this land, the Gumbankia people. Um, they're the Bunjalung Nation and um, we're taking this interview on their land. Um, so the song Follow the Sun, um, it was said to be written in Glenifer, which is, you know, near where I come from. Um, is that true? Yeah. And um, what part Well, I don't know what the place was called, but I was up in Ballingen, somewhere in the scrub up there, um, and I don't know Ballingen very well, but where I was, it was this beautiful creek, and it was really clear, and there was... I was watching some trout in the water at the time, I remember that pretty vividly, and I wrote Follow the Sun there, yeah. I just got home from um, Canada, because I recorded that album in Canada, and so Follow the Sun for me was like a homecoming song, you know, I was yeah. like stoked to be back home, yeah. and yeah. I wasn't actually even going to, um, I wasn't actually even going to put it on the record, it was just sort of like something for me. And then people were like, oh, that's pretty deadly, that song. You know, maybe you should put it on the album. And I was like, oh, I'll put it on the album, and yeah. And five years later, it's one of your most famous songs. Yeah, it's, de it's by far my most famous song, yeah. 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 Um, so you've done a couple of collaborations with other artists, right? Yeah, a few, yeah. So if you had to collaborate with any artist, it could be dead or alive, who would you choose to collaborate with? Oh, dead or alive. Probably Jimi Hendrix. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, it'd be pretty interesting. Yeah, look, he was such a wild spirit, I think, and I'm intrigued by, um, I've always been intrigued by Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. Um, just to, maybe not collaborate with him, but just to even talk to him and mm. sort of try and Get to know him. Yeah, just sort of try and get into his mind there for just 10 minutes. It'd be mm. amazing to, see, to hear what's yeah. going on in that brain. Yeah. Um, so, you've probably been asked, like, you know, what inspired you to become a musician, but, like, what inspires you to keep become, being a musician? Or who? Um, people, I think. Like, you know, I, um, I took a break from doing, from touring around during COVID and all that, and I was going to have a break anyway. But um, and then you know when I took that, I, I was like, I enjoyed that, you know, and I thought oh, maybe it'd be nice to f stop and just not do it anymore. Mm. But I feel like the world needs music, you know. People have been through yeah. a tough time. Mm. And there's been a lot of like horrible stories of things that, yeah. things you know, that things that are affecting humanity, um, you know, for your kids. It's a weird time, you know, it's, it's a strange yeah. thing, this pandemic. Constantly um, like homeschooling. And yeah, and you know, and suicide rates are high around the world and um, music is a, it's medicine. It's, yeah. um, and you know, to have the, um, have the gift or have the opportunity to be able to, to be a musician who is able to travel around the world and share the spirit of music. Yeah. Um, it'd be uh, selfish, I think, not to. Yeah. So I'm inspired by the medicine of music. Yeah. And um, so to add on to that, um, Blue, because Blues Fest has been like cancelled for two years due to COVID. What do you think like Blues Fest for this year is? Do you reckon it's like different in any ways or is it like? Um, I was thinking when I came in, you know, it's like, and my wife was saying, geez, everyone involved in organising this must be stoked. You know, that it's finally going ahead. I think I got booked for this show three or four years ago or something. Yeah. So it's taken a long time to happen. Um, you know, it's 
it's an opportunity for people to come together and share music, family, friends, um, at a time when everyone's been through a lot of shit. So yeah. I think, yeah, it's probably extra special. I mean, I think that any music events these days are special and they always yeah. have, you know, we've been sharing music mm. as human beings since the beginning of time in every culture, we use music. Yeah. It's free and we use it to lift each other up and to sing babies to sleep and to keep, you know, to communicate. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's a special thing yeah. in a modern forum like this it's still the same thing, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's yeah, extra special. Mm. Um, so do you have any indigenous heritage? Yeah, on my, my father's side, yeah. Cool. Um, what were you like as a little kid? Um, I don't know. Busy, I think. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I like to be outside. I was always outside. Mm. And, um, who and or what inspired you to pick up the guitar? Um, I don't know, like, I always like to teach myself to play instruments. Mm. Um, my, I, I, if there was an instrument somewhere where we went, I'd pick it up and, and yeah. play it, you know? Mm. And my brother had a guitar at one point and that's kind of where yeah. I first started to play and oh. teach myself. Um, so, yeah, but I, from a young age, you know. And uh, when you were young, did you, like, what was your career choices? What would you want to be when you were young? Um, I didn't really think about it, to be honest. Like, yeah. I thought at one point I might be a park ranger because I wanted to do something, like, outside. Yeah. And music, like, I always did, but... I wasn't focused on that as a career like or anything like that but then yeah. to be honest with you I wasn't the kind of kid who was focused on any kind of career yeah. I, I didn't like school at all couldn't stand it and couldn't wait to get out of it um, and you know I might have been more suited to something like a Steiner school because it's more yeah. creative but the school I went to I wasn't into so it was more like I just wanted to get out of there mm. and then I felt like once I got out of there yeah I could sort of yeah I could sort of kind of um, yeah navigate my way around but the music part for me was like I always I love the tone of wood my grandfather used to make instruments all my instruments were wooden I loved mucking around with didges and playing them same times guitar and stuff like I was it wasn't like I wasn't really planning a musical career because it was kind of unorthodox what I did it was a bit more yeah sort of wasn't really well, that looks standard Let's do it. but then it became successful anyway and you know I was really stoked that that happened but I didn't sort of really plan it out I just followed my nose uh, when you started making music, like when you like started looking into it as a career, were you in a band or were you doing like solo acts? Uh, I was in different bands, like, um, I remember like I, I sang in a band, in a cover band when I was like 14 or 15 because I got 60 bucks if I went and did it and I was really shy and I used to hitchhike to where they were playing. Yeah. And there was pubs and that, so I'd lie about my age, and I'd sing these cover songs, and I remember getting, I was really nervous, yeah. and I wasn't, I was pretty shy at that age, and I wasn't very suited to, mm. um, to like playing live. Yeah. But then as I got older, I sort of started doing it a bit more, and I got used to it, and then I, that's when I started playing solo. Do you reckon you can remember the name of that band, or no? Um, I can't remember. No, I can't remember, sorry. I did have another band called Red Rattlesnake. Probably I was about maybe 16 or something at that point. Yeah. Um, yeah, Red Rattlesnake, that was a cool band. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, so, 
Wait, are there any one of your songs that you like reckon deserved a little bit more than the attention that they got? What do you mean in the public? Like, if, is there one song that you wrote that you thought was really good that you reckon probably could have gotten a bit more attention? Oh, uh, nah. I mean, nah, I, I don't really keep an eye on that stuff. Like, I mean, I appreciate it when I hear, like, you know, and it still spins me out. Like, when I look at Follow the Sun or, mm. you know, the amount that that song gets listened to around the world yeah. is an absolute spin out because I didn't expect that but I don't really follow that like it, it's just a bonus if that mm. happens but you know I'm stoked so many people listen to my music a- around the world and, and you know I'm so grateful for that yeah um so uh, where do you where, where are you looking at like settling down yeah <laughs> um when? Uh, I live up north in the sunny coast and I love it up there but yeah. you know um yeah, I, I just like being at, you know, at Oz, in, at home in Australia, you know, I've spent a lot of time travelling around the world, um, playing music and I appreciate that and I'm stoked with my whole career over there but um, when I leave Australia something doesn't come, you know, there's part of me that stays here. So I'm, I'm just stoked to be in Oz, you know, we're lucky over here, mm. yeah, and you really realise that. The more you travel around the world, you realise how lucky we are. Yeah. As a, you know, in this place, yeah. it's, you know, it's magic. Um, I've got one more question. Yeah. Um, what's your favourite tattoo that you've got? Oh, I don't have one. I don't have one. They're all just yeah. stories, yeah. bits and pieces that ended up there over time. <laughs> cool. yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for being in this interview. Welcome, bud. Real pleasure having you. Yeah. Yeah, nice to ch- chat to you. Yeah, thank you. Ready, bro.